Um, thank you, uh, NASRC, for allowing Bitzer to present today during the Sustainable Refrigeration Summit. Uh, we greatly appreciate the opportunity. Uh, today, I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about two new series of compressors that are going to be released by Bitzer. Uh, the first is the ME series. The ME series is a subcritical uh, compressor uh, with a high standstill. Um, and then the second part of the presentation will discuss uh, the TE series compressors uh, that are transcritical compressors uh, rounding out a lineup that we've introduced in the past. Um, before I get into the nuts and bolts, I'll spend a little bit of time on, on talking about the history Bitzer has with CO2 compressors. So we've been involved with CO2 compressors since uh, 1995 with our first prototype, the K series, which are subcritical compressors. Uh, since then, we've gone through several iterations on the subcritical size side. Um, our current standard model is uh, was released in 2012. It's the SL series. We've made some improvements internally since 2012, but the basic concept, their basic design hasn't changed um, since 2012. In 2015, we introduced the first uh, uh, compressors of the in the ME series, the smallest two cylinders. In 2019, we introduced the largest uh, compressors in the E series, the six cylinder versions. And this year, we will be introducing the four cylinder versions of the ME uh, series. So these are all the, um, this is all on the subcritical side of the, the, the CO2 spectrum. On the transcritical side, we've been involved since 2000. Uh, the first production series compressors for the TE series were in 2003. Since then, um, in 2018, we uh, upgraded the compressors, uh, the two and the six cylinder series compressors to a TE series. And this year we'll be releasing the four cylinder TE series to round out the TE series lineup and obsolete all the TC versions, along with the introduction of very step which uh, we'll discuss in this uh, separate presentation. So the end of this year, we'll have uh, several new compressors being released for, uh, for the market. We're excited about that. Um, in addition to compressors, we have uh, you know, IQ modules, which is a CMRC that will be released. It's, uh, it goes in conjunction with the very step, the unloading. We also, in the future, will have LSPM High Efficiency Motor Echoline Plus compressors released. And to round out our, our, our CO2 product offering, we do offer pressure vessels um, for CO2 as well. So the ME series, the, the, the highlights are here on the screen. The ME series is a high standstill pressure compressor. So both on the suction and the discharge side, that can withstand 100 bar or 1,450 PSI. This eliminates the, the requirement for having additional standby equipment in case of power outages or something that could allow the pressure to increase in the system. This, these compressors can ha handle much higher uh, pressures than our standard SL compressors. Um, also, these compressors do offer the ability to run um, with motor option one, which allows higher uh, application limits. As you can see in the diagram below, the ME series uh, motor two would be the same as the SL currently available, but the ME series with the motor one allows you to go much higher condensing and much higher suction temperatures. Last uh, highlight is the six PME compressor is our largest compressor and its displacement is for a little bit over 40% uh, higher than our current uh, four NSL compressor, which is our largest subcritical SL series compressor. So uh, for big, bigger applications, we now have an opportunity to use uh, larger compressors and reduce the size of racks. Um, in, in, in addition to that, reducing cost. The big, big thing this year was uh, the six series was released prior to this year uh, in the rest of the world, but this year we got UL for the six series and then the four series, uh, sorry, the four FME compressors to four PT, PME compressors, those are gonna be released by the end of the year. Uh, those are uh, in replacing the TC versions um, and we'll talk about some of the benefits uh, in some upcoming slides. 
The SL series, the news on the SL series is that we have a very step available for field trial. Again, very step is the loading. So this would be mechanical loading for two cylinder compressors. And you can see it's only available for the smallest two cylinder compressors, the two MSL through the uh, two FSL series. So um, that uh, is uh, a new uh, option or opportunity. And we're looking for partners to be able to have more field trials for this system, for this option. So we currently have one field trial. Um, in that field trial, the very step is being controlled by a CMRC, the Bitzer IQ module. So that has an algorithm in the module that is controlling the energizing, de-energizing of that single loader head uh, based on a zero to 10 input from a system controller. So um, it's very similar to what we currently do with our CMRC and loading for our HFC compressors. This time it's been incorporated into a two cylinder CO2 compressor. So the high, uh, the benefits are, you know, it's an alternative to a VFD. So um, it is UL approved already and in our file and it is field retrofittable. So you can um, uh, exchange the heads in the field with an unload, a standard head with an unloader head and add a coil and a CMRC to control it and get some unloading on a uh, two cylinder that uh, may exist already in the field. Um, the benefits of the, the subcritical series in general, whether it's the SL or the ME, are the internal design resulting in low pulsations, low carryover rate, um, the ability to uh, use an inverter if necessary without any special requirements, and not newly available uh, mechanical loading uh, as well. The, the ME series, as mentioned before, has higher standstill, um, which may be able to reduce additional equipment and reduce cost. And uh, also the motor one option, which allows you to move much higher condensing temperatures uh, on the subcritical side. Um, Moving on to the transcritical uh, compressors. So the motivation for the TE series um, is shown here on, on this slide. So the TC series, which has been around for some time now, um, had some uh, areas of improvement. And with the release of the TE, we were able to optimize the compressor performance, um, implement mechanical unloading, which hasn't been done on the market so far to date. Um, just show our commitment to low GWP refrigerants and natural refrigerant technologies and to increase options for our customers by adding displacement and motor combinations that previously did not exist. The smaller four-cylinder compressors series in Bitzer um, terminology is a CKHE3. So there's three displacements, the P through the K. And um, as you can see, pretty much all new inside and out. So new housing to optimize the internal flow to reduce, this results in lower pulsations, lower carryover rates. We also improved the head design and the valve plate design. Most importantly to our customers is probably the addition of a motor one in the KTE version. So now we have this um, transcritical displacement with a higher, um, a larger application window that is allowed by adding a larger motor into the compressor. The CKHE4 series, which is a larger four-cylinder uh, CO2 compressors, transcritical, uh, there are six displacements in this series. Um, again, similar upgrades as the smaller cousin, um, new housing, new valve plates, new cylinder head design. But uh, the most important uh, or the biggest change is the, uh, the drive assembly has been changed to so the bore and stroke uh, drive assembly have been updated and the addition of a completely new displacement uh, for GTE, which falls right in the middle of the series and uh, eliminates a, a step in capacity between the H and the F that previously existed. Um, for the, 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 the internals and the improvements, um, the resulting compressor is slightly different than the existing TC uh, series. So 
electrically, uh, uh, electrical, um, the electrical specs and motor codes have not changed. So there's no alterations required to the design of the electrical system by incorporating these new compressors into rack designs. What has changed are some small dimensions. So the mounting connections and the mounting feet, the suction and discharge connections are still in the same uh, location, so no changes there. It's just there's slight differences, which I've highlighted in red, um, the height, the width, and the length. So you can see the largest discrepancy is on the smaller CKHE3 compressors. It's about an inch and a quarter on the width. So we want to make sure we point that out to ensure that there aren't going to be any conflicts by changing uh, these using these compressors in an existing design, but we highly doubt there will be. Um, that width is um, right at between the two edges of the cylinder head, so it's at the not at the feet, but about higher up on the compressor. So uh, we're pointing those out here in this slide. Uh, again, reiterating some of the new compressors available in two different series. Um, and next slide here shows the physical differences between the two um, series. The Echoline CO2 is the new TE series. The Octagon was the older TC version. So you can see just by looking at this slide that there are quite a few differences between the two, uh, notably the cylinder heads and the housing. Uh, you can easily identify old version versus new by looking at the housing and the cylinder. Um, so what is new is the uh, four cylinder compressors. This is just a quick review of, of what's available. The GTE is completely new. The TE series in general, four cylinder is gonna be new to the US market uh, by the end of the year. So this basically allows us to use the very step which I mentioned, it's backwards compatible. So field replacements can also be done without uh, any issues. And it's the basis for the upcoming Echoline Plus series, which will have the high efficiency LSPM motors in it. So once those get UL and are approved for the US market, they'll be interchangeable with the TE version, the standard, and the TC. So you can go from a very old technology in the TC to some the state of the art with the Echoline Plus without having to repipe or redesign the system. So we discussed the uh, changes to the compressor, uh, mostly the cylinder heads, valve plates, and housings, but those are very important, but the resulting benefits are what uh, the, is gonna be attractive to the customer. So there's an increased efficiency between two and 4%. Uh, the, the design of the heads and the housing reduces gas pulsations and lowers our oil carryover rate, especially at higher speeds, over speeding the compressor up to, let's say 70 Hertz. And then most importantly, the addition of the very step, the mechanical unloading to um, add other things for customers to meet part load efficiency, uh, part load uh, operation in, in the highest efficiency possible. With that, um, that's all I have for this presentation. There's some information here showing contact information. Uh, my name is Miguel Boskin. I'm the application engineering manager. And then on the right-hand side, if you're interested in compressor training, we have some dates set up uh, and you can go to the website listed and register for training for uh, this fall or early next year. With that, I'd again like to say, thank the NASRC for inviting us to share and have a good, good day. Thank you.